I'm Charlie McKenna with Lily's Q, and today we're here to talk about a standing rib roast, prime rib, sort of a holiday meal coming up. We're getting close to Christmas, but this is a great Christmas smoked meal. I'm gonna show you how to prep this standing rib roast slash prime rib, and we're gonna cook it here on the mill scale offset 94 gallon cooker. But first we gotta make sure we get this thing all nice and, and beautiful and tied up and ready to go. Prime rib or standing rib roast obviously comes from the ribeye. What we're looking for in the meat obviously is we're looking for a high intermuscular fat. That's the good fat. This fat on the outside, I don't, obviously it's not as good to eat as much as the inner muscular fat. So when you're looking for a quality piece of beef, basically what we wanna see is, we wanna see a nice eye here, smaller fat between here and the outer muscle. And then obviously we wanna see a good amount of inner muscular fat throughout the, out the protein right here. And you can see there's nice, nice rib color and red color up here for the uh, standing rib roast. Now, I like to make sure that I French the bones a little bit. See, you can see this is called Frenching the bones. If it's not done, what you can do is you can take your uh, butcher knife and you can scrape them down. Um, I like to just clean them up a little bit, clean these down, make sure they're all nice and pretty and all the like silver skin is off. Obviously presentation is a big part about when you're cooking a holiday meal or cooking for family members. So I like to try to make it as pretty as possible. We've cleaned these down a little bit already, but we're just gonna clean them up a little bit more. All right, you can use your butcher knife to scrape them down, clean them off a little bit. Now, I wanna make sure that the rib roast cooks nice and evenly. So what I'll do is I'll tie it up. So I have my uh, like trusty butcher twine here. I'll pull some of this off and I'll just lay it next to me so that it comes off a little bit easier while I'm doing it. This is relatively easy. As you can see, I also have it still on a tray with a wire rack. That's for seasoning so that I don't dirty up my cutting board. Try to stay as clean as possible throughout the cook so it makes it much easier to clean as we, uh, when we get finished up. So you have this standing rib roast. What I like to do is I'll, I'll, I'll take the twine, I'll take it under the meat, and I like to go close to the bone. This is relatively easy. Basically, you're just trying to squeeze the meat together to cook it more evenly. We'll set this off to the side as you can see here and I'll, I wrap it around once and then I wrap it around twice. And then as I'm next to the bone, I'll make sure that's really close. And then I will cinch it up, right? As I cinch it up, I want it to get a little bit tighter. So I'll hold my finger there and then I'll just wrap it around. Tie it through nice and tight you can move this over then what I can do is you can take your nice butcher knife trim that off I'll do I'll go and do the same thing on a two bone roast I normally tie as many strings as there are bones right next to it so if this was a longer standing rib roast a four bone or three bone uh, sorry yeah three bone or four bone five bone or the whole prime rib I'll tie one next to each bone so it helps pull the meat close to the bone keep this nice and tight. Mainly this is for even cooking as well as a nice presentation. Tie that nice and tight. Again, we'll take the butcher's twine off. As you can see, I do like to go back here and make sure that everything is nicely lined up, nice and straight, resting on the chime bone there. You can see on the front, nice and even. And what it's done is it's tied the bottom up to the top and kind of make it more evenly round so it cooks at a more even rate, all right? So now you have it all nice and tied up. The next thing I like to do is season the meat itself. So for this, what I like to use is I like to use our Lily's Q Q rub, which is a salt-based rub, and our brisket pepper. So basically a salt, pepper, garlic, like I would be seasoning for a, a ribeye steak. All right, so what we'll do is I like to season the back first because that's the non-presentation side. Grab these nice handy shakers. Makes it nice and even when you season as well as you don't lose a lot of seasoning all over your uh, table, cutting board. I like to season all sides. The cure rub, right? I'll leave this top part for last, right? Now, when you're seasoning on a piece of meat like this, you can, it probably looks like I'm going quite heavy and it may seem like it's going to be salty. It will not. When you're seasoning a big piece of meat, you need to make sure that when you're using the salt or the, or the rub that has salt in it, you wanna put a decent amount on because you're trying to penetrate flavor all the way into the middle here and season the middle piece of meat. Now, when you move this around on the cutting board, when you go to put it in the smoker, some falls off. When you, when you uh, move it in the smoker, when you take it out, some falls off. So you wanna put a decent amount of rub on, on the piece of meat to start. 
The next rub I'll go to is the brisket pepper. And we'll like, the brisket pepper I just kind of pat on into the salt so it sticks a little bit. We'll tilt it here, do this side. And I do not like to rub the rub in, even though that's the name of it, because the salt crystals, I believe, makes a little striation in the meat and then more moisture come out. We're trying to keep as much moisture in as possible. So again, we'll season that side. So pat that pepper on. Go back and do the back a little bit because it fell off as we went around. The salt also will still start to pull moisture from the meat towards the outer uh, side of the, of the protein. That will also allow the, the, the rub to stick nicely. Now I'm doing the presentation side. You could put a little olive oil or a little moisture on. I don't necessarily feel it needs it because the salt itself helps pull out the moisture. Pat that in a little bit. Then we'll go to the top here. Make sure the top's all seasoned. Now we'll set these rubs, rubs to the side. I also like to keep a little damp towel next to my station so that I can kind of brush off the extra rub that kind of fell on the cutting board. Hopefully it's not too much because you did it on this nice tray. We'll set this to the side. Now, the last little bit is I like to take that little wet towel and I like to clean the bones off, okay, for presentation. And then I have heavy duty aluminum foil, which I have a tiny little piece. I'll take this and I'll rip it in half. Now, the reason I'm doing this and I like to put the dull side next to the bones, but I'll wrap it around the bone like this. We'll just press it on the bone. Now, I like to do that because it'll keep the bones nice and clean. So when it's in the smoker, no, not a lot of smoke's getting on the bones. Discoloring them, it'll keep the bones kind of nice and white. So when you take this off after the finished cooking, it'll be nice and beautiful. Now, so we have the tin foil on the bones. We have the nice uh, standing rib roast prime rib seasoned. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the temperature and cook methods. So on the mill scale, I like to run it around, you know, 275 for the standing rib roast because one, we're trying to like break down the intermuscular fat of the, the prime rib as well as add smoke flavor to it. So what we're also gonna do is we're gonna cook it to an internal temperature. So all my meats, I cook to an internal temp, that's way so I can know I can get consistency and the continued cook at the same temperature. I have my trusty thermopin here. Basically what we will do is we'll look for a temperature of right around 125 to 130, you know, right at that mid-rare temperature once we're at a finished product. That'll take about two hours, two and a half hours at that temp on the smoker to do. And then you'll have a beautifully nice golden brown standing prime rib for your holiday party or for your holiday dinner for your family. So now we'll take this and we'll put it in the smoker. I do like to shut the door uh, to the firebox so when you open this door, it doesn't suck a lot of air in, which then will put a lot of ash on your grate. So we'll take this. <clears throat> I like to set the prime rib from the middle, like right on side the middle towards the back half near the uh, chimney. We'll get this thing back up to around 250 to 275 degrees. And this prime rib, same rib roast, will cook for about two hours to two and a half hours. This is around a four pound standing rib roast, uh, if you're interested in the, in the weight of what, what that one is. But we'll shut the door, then we open the firebox door back up. That way we can get a nice clean fire, make sure the fire is burning at the right rate. All right, here we are back. We got the uh, standing rib roast prime rib for your holiday Christmas or any other time of year that you want to really eat prime rib, which is any time of the year for me. Got the mill scale going. It's sitting right about two, right, coming back up from where I opened it. It's uh, about 225, coming up to 250, 275. The prime rib has been in there about two, two and a half hours. We've reached a nice temperature, about 125 degrees. So we're gonna take the uh, prime rib out. So I'll pop this open. You can see it has this like beautiful color on it. Nice red from the smoke. Fats kind of start to render. So I'll just pull this out. Now what I'll do is I'll take the tin foil off the end. You can set that aside. All right, so now you have this beautiful prime rib. It does have the string on it, so what we'll do is I'll pull this up, kind of pull it off, pull it down the front. 
want to kind of be gentle as possible so you don't knock off any more rub than needed. Pull this down. We'll set that there. Now we'll pick that up and pull the string off and we'll set it back down. So here we have this beautiful, nice smoked prime rib, two bone. It was about four pounds to start. It's probably lost about a half a pound. You can see the beautiful brown color where the Maillard browning on the outside of the protein. That's the flavor you want. Obviously you have that good intermuscular fat with a, a ribeye basically. Now, when you go to cut it, you could slice pieces on either side of the bone, or you could have two nice, decent sized chunks that you slice right down the middle. So what we're gonna do now is we'll cut into it. I'm gonna go right down the middle, kind of between the two. But you can see here, we've let, it, we've let the meat rest now. We'll go right through it. And then hopefully we can turn it open. We'll have this nice juicy, red, beautiful piece of prime rib. You know, it's right above medium rare. You see, as we smoked it. For more recipes and tips, you can follow us at lilliesq.com.